Hey guys, it's Stacey from ECS Customs Tips and Tricks. You've just been out and bought yourself a new DC TIG welder after seeing someone on Instagram that you follow laying beautiful dimes and making amazing colours and you thought to yourself, surely it can't be that hard, I'm going to do it myself. In today's video, I'm going to simplify why your stainless welds are coming up looking like this, all burnt and aren't coming up looking nice and colourful like the people that you most likely follow who make it look pretty easy. Nine out of 10 times, you're probably not actually a bad welder. It's probably just the fact that you've got your welder set up wrong, or like many of us, we get all excited. We go out and buy a brand new TIG welder from the shop, and we plug it in, we have a go, and the welds come up burnt looking like this. It's actually from the consumables that they supply. A lot of suppliers and manufacturers will not supply you with the right TIG torch consumables to be able to lay nice colorful domes like this. So don't be disheartened, I've been there, I've been into the store, all excited, bought the new DC TIG welder, got home, got some stainless out and started a weld and I couldn't quite understand why it was coming up all burnt. So I thought I'd just make a little video to help you guys set up your TIG torches um, and give you a bit of guidance to point you in the right direction so that you too can lay some nice colourful dimes. Now the idea of this video is to keep it real simple for you guys, we're not going to get too technical. Yeah, standard TIG welder that you buy from the shop, the manufacturers will supply you with a collet body and a nozzle looking like this. Um, they're cheap, they're nasty, that's why they do it. These collet body and nozzles are pretty good for um, doing aluminium, doing mild steel, there's nothing wrong with it. But for when it comes to stainless where you want a bit more of a delicate gas coverage, um, they're no good. So as soon as you unpack your welder, you might as well grab them, throw them over your shoulder. Now. I get a lot of guys coming in for welding lessons that bring their torches in set up with these asking why their welds are coming up burnt like this. One thing with these is that they can create a vortex so if you've got your argon turned up too much as it's, the argon is coming out it'll drag oxygen in beside it and mix it which creates a turbulence and then your welds will go black. Another thing is they just don't distribute a very nice even flow gas coverage gas shield, whatever you want to call it. So I honestly, just to keep it simple, grab it, throw it. Because that will nine out of 10 times be why your weld's looking like that. Had to go get them. All right, so we've discussed why these are no good. Keep it plain and simple, they're just shit. What you need to do is get online, go to your local tool store and find a gas lens. I usually run a size 10 or 12. Um, if I'm doing titanium, I might go up to a 16. Um, bigger isn't always better because then it takes a lot more volume of argon to push out um, so I find around your 12 gets you a pretty nice looking weld. So you need to run a gas lens because they distribute a nice even flowing argon shield over your weld so we won't go into that anymore as well keep it plain and simple get a gas lens. You don't need these ones. Now that you've got your TIG torch set up you can also look at tungsten how far out you have it sticking I like to have mine sticking out, I don't know, about 20 mil because I'm quite a confident welder, pretty good with my angles. Um, if you're new, stick it back in. Obviously, the closer in you have your tungsten, the less argon flow you need. The further out you have your tungsten, the more argon flow you need to compensate for that extra little bit of distance. Now, it might not seem much, but say, for example, sticking out here, 20 mil, I might run it at 14 litres a minute. First, having it in close here, I'd probably run it at about eight litres a minute. Um, another thing too is when you're welding and you've got your wire and you're welding in your weld pool, try and keep your wire within inside what you think would be the gas um, coverage. You'll notice this because if you pull it out of the gas coverage, it'll burn and then when you bring it back in, it's oxidised and you're adding oxidised material back into the weld. Now you'll never get a clean weld if you're pulling your wire out of the weld pool and putting it back in. So I always suggest try and keep your weld wire just sitting beside your cup when you're coming forward then dab, then come forward, then dab. Same when you're ramping down at the end, just leave the wire lingering around in there so that you don't pull it out and it burns the end because you'll just put contaminants straight back into your weld. This time, I'm gonna talk a little bit about setting your welder up. Now, this is a thing that not a lot of people notice. You buy your new welder, it comes with that black argon hose that connects the welder to the bottle. Now, some of the cheaper welders, the hose is cheap. So when you're not welding, the pressure coming out of the regulator between the regulator and the welder creates the hose to expand. And then when the hose expands and you click the trigger, you can hear the gas rush out. 
and then all of a sudden it goes back to sounding like what it should at about 10 litres a minute. So it'll get an initial rush of gas and then the gas will calm down as you're welding. I'd replace that hose because what's happening is when that rush of gas is coming out at the start, it's dragging oxygen in which can then oxidise your weld and then the argon chills out and the pressure reduces down to 10 litres a minute or whatever you have it set on and you're thinking, why is my weld coming up all black and burnt? It's that initial rush of argon that comes out that stirs a bit of oxygen into the weld and then again, you got shit in your weld, you can't get it out, you'll drag that throughout your whole weld. So I quite often replace my argon hose as soon as I buy a welder with proper argon hose from Bok. Um, this stuff doesn't expand under pressure. A lot of these cheaper welders like the Unimig I have here, they come with a black hose, that hose will expand while it's sitting there and it'll cause you to get a rush at the start. So we don't want that. Now I'm going to touch on a few settings on your welder to do with stainless. Um, on that coupon here, I was welding, I think it's two and a half, three mil-ish. I was welding it at 65 amps. It's always good to have about a three to a five second ramp down. This gives time for the stainless steel to cool down slowly. If you ramp it down too quickly, the stainless will just burn. And then again, when you start welding again, you're gonna drag that contaminants back into it. So let's say we're running a four second down slope. That's a pretty good one um, to start off at. And then the other important one is your post flow of argon. I've been welding mild steel with this, so I've had it at five seconds, but if I was welding stainless, I'd be running it around about eight to 10 seconds post flow. So you wanna be able to, when you stop welding, see the weld go from red hot to cold looking again, while the argon's still running, and then have the post flow argon stop. This keeps the, arg um, the argon, this keeps the stainless weld protected, from the oxygen while it's cooling down because if that post flow stops too soon the stainless steel when it's still red hot will oxidize and then you're going to have a nice looking weld and then the end of it's going to look all burnt you don't want that so just run a bit of post flow don't be too cheap on the argon because it will bite you when it comes to your quality of welding if you're getting a pinhole at the end of your weld with the stainless too that's because your ramp down is too fast so you need to let that ramp down ramp down for about four to five seconds um, until you can see that there's going to be no hole there and then another thing that i see a lot of people making the mistake is that they'll be welding they'll finish the weld and pull the torch straight away get in the habit of when you finish welding and you ramp down leave the torch there while the post flow flows over the stainless um, by doing this it'll make sure that you get a nice colorful finish at the end um, the rest of the settings are not too important I usually have about 0.3 of a second plus argon, uh, pre-argon, so that there's a shield of argon around before the arc starts, because that will ruin your day as well if you don't have argon there ready to go. Um, it would be better if this welder stayed on the settings so I didn't have to flick through it each time. I start am, I started about 10 because I weld on 40, so that means that when I started up, it's got like a little night light almost, so you can see where you are, move around if you need to get over to where your weld seam is, um, and then I let it crank. So that's the basics about setting the welder up. Just make sure you've got about a three to four, five second um, down slope and around eight second post gas. Um, obviously, if you're welding a lot hotter, you'd want to go up with your post gas to maybe 10, 15 seconds. Just as long as it takes from that weld to go cherry red to looking like a normal um, stainless steel cold weld again. Thanks for watching. I just um, thought yeah, it'd be good just to touch on a few of the little things that a lot of people overlook when they're learning stainless, like pulling your wire out of the argon um, that hose expanding can cause a lot of trouble and just running the wrong consumables. So when you're welding stainless, please, please make sure you're running a gas lens because you will not achieve these colorful results by running those collet bodies and nozzles that come with your welder when you buy it. So it's a mistake a lot of people make. They get really excited, they buy the welder and then they can't work out why the welds are coming up with any shit like they do. Um, if you guys want some materials to practice on as well, Tick tickets. Um, they hooked me up with a whole stack of little bits of stainless that I use for practicing when I take welding lessons. So um, jump on their website, and yeah, they're pretty good to buy some materials off just so you can have a practice feel it out. Um, I quite often, before I'm starting like a titanium job or aluminium job, I'll grab some of their coupons, get my welder set up, have a little play. Because nine out of ten times when you're about to start the job, you haven't bought spare materials, so it's easier to throw their materials in the bin than it is to wreck your job. So uh, cheers for tuning in and I'll be back next week with some more tips and tricks on welding.